Thanks, Sarah. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie, a product consultant here at Bullhorn, and I just wanted to start by saying thank you for joining me for today's webinar, where we'll be looking at making the most of your entity lists. So entity or so entity lists or list views are so important as they're where you'll be searching for and looking through your records where you can see um, find the right candidates and the right contacts. So we'll have a look through some of the features of the list view that you can utilize to really harness and make the most of them. So today we will be looking at how to manage your columns and your column and save your column layouts. We will be looking at how to use the binoculars, favorite searching, how to search within hot lists and distribution lists. We'll have a look at inline editing, mass updates and mass actions that you can take to multiple records. And we'll be finishing off with looking at the short list list view. So hopefully by the end of the session today, you'll be able to see that you can save yourself so much time if you utilize the list views. Um, because from there you can create notes, tasks, and you can make sure that you see all of that relevant information by making the most of those columns and you can preview the records. So first things first, I'm going to be opening Bullhorn and heading to my job list view. Now I'm going to click menu and here you can see your list view. So obviously you've got candidates with that nice green color and all of them in here, but I'm going to open the jobs first of all. We'll come back to the candidate list view later. So we'll just give this a second to load. Now, um, most of you will probably know that the list view is where you would go to see all of the records of that specific entity. So because I'm in the job list view, this is where I've come in to see all of my jobs in the system. Now, the first thing you might notice in here is that you have these columns at the top. So the columns that you have on these lists control the information you can see when you're looking at those records. So getting these in order will be beneficial in the long run to help with um, the information you can see in efficiency day to day. So the standard functions of the columns, just we'll have a little look at them, is you can move them around and make so if, for example, I wanted to move status over here, you can click and drag it to have it display there. You can also make them bigger and make them smaller sort of depend you might make them bigger if you wanted to see more information from that specific column you might make them smaller if you're trying to fit more columns in this one screen any of these if you do have more columns than can be fit on this first page you can just see that I've got this scroll at the bottom that you can move to scroll across and if I had more columns to the right I'd be able to scroll across and take a look at those now you also can click on the top of the columns and they will give you the option to sort ascending or descending. And depending on the type of field that they are, is you will be able to click in here and if it's, it might give you the option to search with text or if it's a drop down, it might give the option to click and filter and filter for candidates of a specific status. An example, if I was to use this column in there. So, we're going to have a look at now how to add and remove columns from your list view in here. So to do that, I'm going to click columns here at the top. Now, under selected columns, this is where you can see all of the columns that I've currently got selected to display on the front end when I'm looking at the columns there. So my if I press reset, this resets to whatever my default columns are. Now, my default columns are geared towards um, so let's set the scene here. So I'm a recruiter and 95% of the time I'm looking at perm roles and perm positions. So I have here salary information. I have the perm fee in there because obviously that is relevant to me most of the time. Now, if it's the case that sometimes I do have the old contract position, I might want to create a second layout that isn't my default. But if I spend some time creating that layout so I can easily click and select it, I can choose that to then not have to keep filtering, adding in columns, removing columns to get what I need to see. So how you would do that is if I click on the columns at the top under selected commons, I'm going to start with removing the ones that I don't want. So I don't want perm fee and I don't want salary either. And if there was anything else that you wanted to remove, you can just click and remove it. Now, if you wanted to add additional information, what you can do is you can either scroll through and have a look for those fields that you might want, or you can search. So with my contract positions, I want to see end date. So I'm going to find my scheduled end, which is the name of my field and add that in. I also as well want to see bill rate and I'm going to look for pay rate in here too. 
payment. There we go, perfect. So now I've selected all of those. If I hit save, what's that's gonna do is it's gonna add my columns over here to the right-hand side. So it's now included them in the view and it's removed the perm fee and salary, the ones that I unselected. Now, to save this, so if I press reset, that's gonna take me straight back to my default. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit create and create creating this layout and saving it will mean that next time I choose it, I'll just be able to select it. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go with um, contract job layout in here. So I'll go with that and I'm gonna save it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click columns and I'm going to reset. Now resetting this here takes me back to that default and then if it's that time of the week where I'm going to look at my contract jobs I'll just click on this, click on my contract job layout and it will amend and it will open that up there for me. So columns are sticky but it is always good to save your most used layout just in case you do accidentally reset um, so that you don't have to spend lots of time removing and adding those columns. So that's really useful there. So that's how you can use those columns. Now you also as well have the ability here to filter by users. So next to columns you have users. Now this is a really easy way to sort of in the list view as a default it will usually show everyone's jobs. Now obviously most of the time I might not want to see everyone's I might just want to look at my own. You can just click my jobs there and save and then that will then bring back only my jobs which I don't own any so none came back but if you did then those would return there so yeah you can use that you can also use it to filter for specific departments as well so if I click on here you can see all my groups so if I wanted to click and have a look at every, the healthcare team IT teams jobs I could click on that and then hit search and then and then click save and then that would display now that's how to filter by owner. So for the next thing we're gonna talk about, I'm gonna head over to the candidate list view. So I'm gonna to go to menu and candidates to bring that up. Now, the next thing we're gonna have a look at is the binoculars in the system. So a great feature of the list view, which is also actually dotted throughout the system. So you can see them in other places too. Um, you can click on the binoculars to see certain information like a preview of the system. So if I click on the binoculars here on World Bullhorn, that will slide out. And in here you can see a preview of the record. So I can see the details on here, any notes, the CV, the relevant experience. And I can see that as a preview of the candidate. So I don't need to open up the candidate to see that information. I can really easily grab it here. So, Although this session isn't specifically about searching, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the different types of searching I can do, but I do just want to show you a benefit of the binoculars, which is on the list view. So if I click the search up here, if you do a keyword search, now, if you ever forget what this keyword search looks at specifically, you can always hover over these binoculars and it will tell you the names of the fields it searches within. So I'm going to be using this mainly as a CV search today. So what I'm just going to do is in here, this uses Boolean logic. So I'm just going to search for technical support and I'm going to put it in these speech marks. Putting it in those speech marks means that technical and support will only return as a phrase. So because those words mean something differently together than they do if they were separate. And I'm going to hit search. So running that search will bring back anyone that has technical support experience on their record and in their CV. Now, the reason that I did this search is so that I could show you within the binoculars, if I click that and it pops the slide out out, if I choose CV, anywhere there in yellow is the word or phrase that I searched upon will be highlighted to help draw your eye to where you need to go. So if you are looking for a candidate, um, and you want to see the validate the list of results that you get back from doing that search, you can click on those binoculars and then have a scroll through. You can also then as well click through. And if you go down the candidates, you'll be able to then click through and see that information through their CVs. So you don't have to close it and reopen it. You can just click through and go through the binoculars on each record. And you can see that all in there. Also on the binoculars, 
if you bring this slide out, it also enables you to take actions on that specific record itself. So I can click on actions. It gives me the ability to add notes, to add tasks, to add shortlists, and you can do all of that through in here without actually having to open up the record and leave that list view. And so that's the binoculars. So just bear in mind whenever you see them in the system, whether it's list view or not, it's always going to pop out some sort of preview there. So those are really useful. Now, I just want to point out before we go on to the next thing that we're going to talk about, if you ever see this clear button in your list view, whenever you open it or if you want to start a search or some sort of filter on a column, just bear in mind that if you see this clear, there is some sort of search or filter in place, which means that you might not be seeing everything, all of the candidates from, from fresh, all of the candidates in the system. So just bear that in mind. So if you want to click and clear all, then I would recommend starting your search from within there so that you know that you're starting from a fresh and everyone will be included. So the next thing that we're going to have a look at is the favorite searching. So favorite searching in the system, again, I know this webinar is about lists, but favorite searching is a great way to utilize your list views and help bring back those candidates of this that have specific criteria that you're always looking for. Now, I'm going to do a quick search using the search up here and the additional criteria. So in the additional criteria, this is how you can search on the fields that are within the record. Now, I'm going to set the scene here again that the search that I'm going to do. So I every week I want to be able to run a search to bring back everyone that was added in the last seven days. So it might be that you want to do this because you want to send them like a welcome email or you might want to send them your terms of business or you might want to arrange a call with everyone that was added in the last week just to keep an eye on everything. So. If I save this search, if I go with date added within the past seven days and search, that will then bring me back anyone who was added to the system in the last seven days. So from here, I've got my search. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click favorites and I'm going to choose to save this search. So if I click save this search, um, now just bear in mind here where it says private, anywhere in the system you see private is just your user. Public is other users as well. So if you have this favorite search um, and it's beneficial to share with your team members, then you can make it public. You can also with favorite search searches share with particular users. Now, if it just applies to you, or maybe you even don't want to share it with anyone else, um, you can just leave it private and save it. And then that means that it's just for you. So I'm going to leave mine private for now. I'm just going to put um, candidates added last seven days. Just going to do put what it set, what it does on the tin and save it as that. Now, anytime I run this search, it will. The, the good, great thing about favorite searches is that this is a dynamic list essentially so every time that I run that search if next week I run that search it will only bring me back those candidates that fit that criteria at that moment in time so you've got those there and you can see that my favorites come under mine and shared favorites everyone else's come under there now with favorite searching as well favorite searches save the columns that are displayed when you save it. So if you do have particular columns that you like to see when you're looking at those candidates that were added in the last seven days, so maybe you have fields that are particularly important to fill out and you want to make sure people are doing them, you might want to save those columns so that you can see them as you go through. So just to show you what happens if my columns are different to the ones that were saved, I'm just going to remove these ones and save. And then I'm going to try and reopen my search. So if I click favorites and reopen, it will say this, the columns you have displayed are different to the ones that are saved. Would you like to switch the layout to the ones that you've got saved or do you want to leave your columns as is, is essentially what that means. So you can choose, yes, I do want to update my columns or no, if you want to keep the columns as they are and you just want to see those results, you've got those in there. So that is favorite searching in the system. Now, 
the other type of lists that you can have. So like, like I said, with favorite searches, those are dynamic. Now you can also create lists of record. So you can create hot lists or tear sheets. They're de in Europe, they tend to be called hot lists and in America, they tend to be referred to as tear sheets um, or distribution lists. So those are static lists that you can create in the system. Hot lists, for those of you that may not know, are a way of creating static lists of records. So those stores are up to 20,000 records. You can add up to 2,000 at once. So they might be like your hottest candidates of a certain category or they might be the people that as you're going through the system you might add them to a hot list and think I'm going to call those people next week. Um, distribution lists can hold up to 500 records and are mainly utilized for sending mass mails in the system but you can search within those distribution lists and hot lists within your candidate or contact lists whichever they're added to. So just to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to add select them and I'm going to add to a hot list. So I'm just going to add these hot lists and these might be my hottest can technical support candidates. So if I give this a name, so I'm going to go with Katie. Um, Katie hot list, we'll go with that and then I'll save it. Now my hot list has been created so if you wanted to then come in here you can then add a hot list and then you can search within them. So I can include anyone within this Katie hot list and search and it will bring that back and then it allows me to search or filter within the hot list or tear sheet itself. The same way that you can do that with distribution lists as well. And the reason that you might want to do this is you might want to run a search and maybe you sent an email yesterday and you don't want to email anyone that you emailed yesterday so if you if you're sending a similar email you don't want to email anyone you already emailed in that distribution list you can then come in here you can then exclude so change this to distribution list exclude and then i'm going to exclude anyone who was in this distribution list that i emailed yesterday and then search and it will leave you with everybody else so you have those in there so that's how you would search within tear sheets or tear sheets hot lists and distribution lists. Now I'm just going to clear this and next we're going to have a quick look at how to edit records from your list views. Now the way that you would edit list, edit records from your list views is a feature called inline editing. So if you can see when I hover over the status I get this little box with a pencil that pops up and that's called inline editing. So editing the record in this way is the same as me opening up Will Bullhorn, clicking edit, making the change, saving the record and coming back here. So it's the same as doing all of those things, um, but you can do it from the list view. So it's a really great way to be able to keep on what you're doing. If you wanted to come in here, you saw that there was a typo or you thought, oh, I've just spoken to Will. He's not lead now. I'm going to move him to active and I'm going to save it. And that's how you can update those records. They're also really good if you notice potentially you um, have a typo or you want to make multiple changes to multiple records at once. You could then go through your list. So if you saw that these people don't have phone numbers, maybe you want to you've you want to go through them. So you might have them in your phone in your actual phone, but you haven't added them to the system. You can click in here, put in Christine's number, save it, come in here put in Tiffany's number and then save it and then that will you can work your way down the records to update those. So that's inline editing which is a really quick way to edit those records. Now another way that you can update records or make changes to them is through mass updating. So if I select multiple records here, so if I ran a search and these people all fit that search and um, or you noticed that you wanted to update them, change the owner maybe to yourself from someone else, you can click on where it says five selected or that number of five will depend on, will alter depending on how many have been selected. And you can change these things en masse. Now, if you're using team edition of Bullhorn, you won't see change job categories, skills, industries or source, but you will be able to change the owner, change the status and you will be able to delete. So in here with the update, 
These ones you can take on up to 500 records at any one time. So you can manage the ownership to change the owner. You can update the status of those records with the categories in here and skills and business sectors. If I click on this, it gives you the option to replace so remove, that will remove all the categories from that record. And if you replace it with engineering, that will remove whatever exists on the record and replace the categories with engineering. You can remove. So if you had added a new category or you've given a, you had a category with a similar meaning, but you've worded it differently, you might want to remove the old value and, and then add the remove the old value and add the new one. So you can remove the existing one here and then you could choose to add if you wanted to add that into the record there. So that's all of the things that you can do on mass there. Now you also as well here can see the actions that you can take. So you can you can add to hot lists, distribution lists, you can add short lists. So you can add a short list. So if you ran a search and 15 people came back, you'd be able to add shortlist so just to show you if I click add shortlist in here it puts all of those candidates there I would just need to put my job in and save it and that's a way that you can shortlist all the records at once you also as well can create tasks um, and the last thing I'm going to show you on here is that you can map candidates so I've selected all of these um, or what you might do is you might run a search again so if I'm just going to run a quick search in here and do address, radius. I want someone within five miles of a certain place. So if I put the postcode or you can put a city in there, you can hit search and that brings you back anyone who's within five miles of that particular place or that role. So you know that they'd be, commute, be able to commute to work. Now, if I select them, if I then use this, I can map candidates. Now, Mapping candidates puts them all on the map using Google Maps technology. So we'll just give it a second to load, like it says it could take up to a minute. Now, when this loads, it lets you know if anyone doesn't have a postcode. So Billy Simpson doesn't have a postcode, that's why he's not displaying. But if I click OK, here I can see everyone with their pins. So you can click on the pins and see what it is, the name of that person. And because it used Google Maps as well, you can then come in here have a look and you can see where that this is where this candidate lives or in there so you can have a look through there so if i just close out of that now those are all of the things that you can do on mass or some of the things that you can do and take actions on those candidates and then so the last thing that we're going to have a look at is the shortlist list so if i click on to menu and shortlists in here so with shortlists now in your system they may be called submissions um but it's the white white star that's empty that you can use to get to that menu now in here this is where you can see all of your submissions or shortlists rather than within each individual job record is via this list now using this list can be very very beneficial when you're trying to find quickly find submitted records to see what stage of the process they're at now, the really useful thing about this as well is that you have columns with certain information about the candidate. So you've got like the candidate name, the status and the who owns it and the source. Here you can also see I've got the job, the job status, the job contact and the company. And then you have status here. So I could really easily click to see I want to have a look at anyone who is got a CV sent out and I can click on that and filter and it will bring me back anyone that has is currently in that CV sent status. So this is a good way to get a quick overview. If you want to move through the process, I would recommend opening up the individual record, but just for a quick update, you can see that all within this shortlist list, which is a really great thing to utilize. So just before I finish up, I just wanna um, summarize and just say, you can save yourself so much time if you do utilize these list views, because you can, like I said, you can create notes, you can do mass updates, you can inline edit, you can save those columns to save yourself so much time um, and you can use those binoculars so really you don't really need to open the record. If you have all of your columns you can have all of the information you need, use the binoculars to have a look at them and preview um, but the only time you really need to open up the record or you can do, you can function without it, is just to move it through that job workflow because you that does give you more insight into those shortlists through there but like I said the shortlist list does a quick snapshot. So that's all for today. I'm going to be passing back to Sarah now for our questions. Um, 
but yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. We've got a handful of questions, so hopefully we've got enough time to get through a chunk of them. Uh, the first one is, how do I filter for blank records at the top? So the best way to filter for blank records is to, I'll just reset and see if we can get a column that might have some, is to click on here. Oh, sorry. So if I click on here, filter for ascending, that will then put all the blanks at the top and then you could work your way through using inline edit to amend them. Awesome. Next question is, can I share saved layouts with other users? Yes. So when you create your columns, so if I um, create this column in here, so I'll just remove some and create a random one now. But if I hit create, save this as, I'm going to go with bullhorn test. Now you can save a favorite search. So if I save this, save this search, you don't actually have to have a search in there. You can just save it with like column layout and then share it publicly with one of your colleagues that you wanted to share it with. So if I wanted to share it with um, Bethany, I could then save it and then she could log in, see that favorite search I share with her, opened it, and then she can create, choose create and create her own layout in there. Great. Next question is, um, can I change the default my columns reset to? So if you are on corporate or enterprise edition, you can change those. So these are done on a private label basis. So that's usually most people have one private label for their whole company. And how you would change that would be as an admin user in admin and in the view layout. And then this will load. So if I was to choose the candidates here, whatever is in the list, default columns in the include and view displays. So if you're on corporate or enterprise edition, you can have an admin user change what's ever in the include and view, but that will change for all users. Excellent. Uh, next question is, how do I make these lists appear when I first open Bullhorn? Perfect. Great question. So to set your list views up to open when you first open up Bullhorn, if you hit your name and hit preferences, you can set startup screens. So in here, if I put candidates and choose that one. So if I save that, every time I log into Bullhorn, it will automatically open up that list for me. And the great thing about this is this is done user by user. So it might be the case that I love looking at the candidates and someone else wants to look at the jobs, but you know we don't work the same way. So doing this just happens, just will be for your user. So just make sure you put it in there and then save it. I would just say, um, put maybe one, two, maybe three in there. If you put anything more than that, it might be a little bit slow loading because the system will be trying to load four things at once. Thank you. Uh, next question is, can I change the information I see on the slide out when I click the binoculars? Yes. So similarly in admin and view layout, this is something again, that only corporate and enterprise edition can do. But if you click the binoculars and in details, you see this summary, this information is as well on the candidate or whichever one you choose It's under the list tab and it's this card here. So whichever, whatever's in the include and view displays on the front end. Awesome. Well, uh, it's 11 o'clock ET, so I'm going to call it there for the webinar. Uh, thank you, Katie. As a reminder, I saw this question come in once or twice. We will be sharing the webinar recording with all attendees in the next 24 hours, and we'll follow up via email for any questions that came in that we didn't have time to cover during the Q&A. Um, I want to take this opportunity to plug EngageX 2021. Registration is now open. Uh, this is our immersive online conference experience that will be held on June 15th and 16th. If you'd like to register, visit engage.bullhorn.com. Com. For additional training resources, don't forget to log into the Learning Hub through the customer community at help.bullhorn.com. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.